Hey, Ted here. I'm out in my workshop and I wanted to go over uh, compression testing. So compression testing is something a student will do a lot in our program, as well as you as technicians out there will do it. Um, if I have any new people coming on board here that are learning how to do this, I'll give you some pointers. Um, it's pretty important that you do it correctly. You don't make mistakes. You don't leave things undone. Make sure you put the wires back in order. So I'm going to go over some of those things with you to hopefully clear up some of the mistakes you can make, the easy mistakes you can make. Um, first thing is the firing order is the spark plug wires. Now I have a simple four cylinder here on purpose so that we can make it so you can see the firing order easily. So the firing order starts with the front of the engine. Number one is always in the front. And most all GM distributors, which most of your marine gas engines are, rotate clockwise. And then what you want to do is take number one spark plug wire and remove it. And you want to label it. And what you want to label it is take a piece of tape, put it on here and label it number one. Now the other thing that I like to tell students that are new at this is to determine the firing order. And the easy way to do that is just look at the spark plug wires and follow them. So number one follow this wire goes to cylinder number three they're in sequence so number three then number four and then number two obviously so i wrote on here this is number one i can't make that mistake when i put this one back on okay and then i wrote the rotation of the distributor that's clockwise so if you're new to this this way you know that they go in a clockwise format the other thing that you can do is just Take that label number one, get a little notebook and write it on there. That's always good too. Okay, the second thing you want to do is you want to just take all the spark plugs and twist them. Twist them back and forth till you break them loose from the spark plug. That way you don't rip the rubber or damage the insert. Twist them good. Take them, twist them till they come off. Twist and pull. Now the last spark plug being the hardest one to get at is always the one that's difficult and you want to work until you get that one twisted. Whatever you do, never pull on the wire itself. Always grab the boot and pull on the boot. Don't use pliers if you can help it. That's for sure. You're going to damage the insulation on the rubber. So once you get all the spark plug wires off and they're all labeled, they're out of the way. Now what you can do is disable the ignition system. Okay, so the next part is the coil. What we need to do is we need to disable the ignition system. So we don't have spark wire doing a compression test. If you have this type of coil, which has a couple of connections on it, the top connection has a clip on it. Pull the clip up and pull the connector off. If you pull the connector off that has the purple wire and the gray wire, then that will disable the coil so you'll have no spark. If you have a round tubular coil, it'll have two wires on it. You want to find the wire that's gray. Okay, one side will be purple, one side will be gray. The gray wire will be labeled negative. Take a jumper wire and ground that wire. So take a jumper wire with some alligator clips, clip it to that, that gray wire, and put it black ground. That will ground the negative side of the coil so you'll have no spark while you're cranking it over for a compression test. Once you've disabled the ignition coil, then you're ready to do your compression test. Take all your spark plugs out. And then I'm going to show you how to hook up your starter button. All right, I got all the spark plugs out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my compression tester. This is my old Caliquip I had for over 30 years ago. I bought this. And it has two major sizes in it, the 18 and the 14 millimeter. The 14 millimeter is very standard, but there are other sizes. And this kit has the adapters for the smaller applications like Evan Rude used and also... Yamaha Suzuki use. So buying a good test kit is very important. There is always an O-ring on it. So the O-ring needs to be addressed if the O-ring looks split or cracked. So every time you're getting ready to use it, make sure you give it a good once over. Make sure it looks pretty good. Thread it into the spark plug hole. 
just barely until the o-ring touches and then a quarter of a turn all right so i'm going to bring it down till it just touches so the o-ring has just touched and then if i can get a quarter turn out of it that's all you need that just compresses the o-ring a little bit compression test adapters connect just like an air fitting connect that now we're going to hook up the starter button i'm going to show you that next so I have my starter button. I'm going to show you how to hook this up. So first of all, I've taken this engine out of a boat and I have the battery cable removed from it. So your battery cable would hook up here. Here's your red wire that goes to the battery cable. The other two wires, one of them, this wire here is called an ignition bypass wire. It's purple. It's the same color as the ignition wire that would be on the coil. That's the positive side of the coil. So we don't want to hook that up. That's going to get power when you energize the starter. The other wire on the other side is the yellow with a red tracer is the wire you want to hook up to. So I'm going to take one starter button wire and I'm going to hook it up to that wire. I'm going to take the other starter button wire and I want to hook that up to a positive source. Well, at that point, when I push my starter button, that would engage the starter. So it bypasses the starter relay or a slave solenoid on the engine. So I'm ready to crank the engine over at that point. All right, so now I have my spark plugs out. I have my compression tester installed. I've got my starter button hooked up. So now I'm ready to do my compression test. So just a review, I want to make sure you understand everything in order is to Label number one spark plug wire. Understand that you need to know which wires go where on the distributors. I have disabled the ignition system. I've removed the purple wire from the coil. So that way I have no spark. If I had a round style coil, then I would find the gray wire and I would take a jumper wire and ground that. The other option you can do is to disconnect your coil wire here. But the problem with that is it will still create spark. So you want to take a grounding wire, jumper wire, or spark gap tester, and you want to ground this wire as well off the coil if you wanted to do that. That's just as fast. That works well. It depends on which way you want to do it. And now I have my starter button hooked up, yellow one, a red tracer wire, and a power source. I've actually picked it up back off here and then I'm ready to crank my engine over. So once you crank the engine over, what you want to do is you want to crank the engine over. The books will tell you to hold the, wide, the throttle wide open. You won't see a lot of difference with that. So you don't have to do that if you don't remember. I forget a lot, so I forget to hold the throttle wide open. So when I crank the engine over with my starter button, I want to crank it over while I'm looking at the gauge. And when I look at the gauge, I want to see the gauge go up at least to 100 PSI. If it doesn't get to 100 PSI, that's below the firing level compression ratio of that engine. So I'm going to go to the next cylinder and I'm going to check that cylinder. If that cylinder goes over 100, now I know this cylinder is low. The idea is to look at all the cylinders, rotate the engine, at least you hear the, the pulse of the gauge at least four times. You want to see at least four pulses on the gauge. Four to five. Some people say to crank it over till the gauge stops. That's excessive. So basically four or five pulses of the gauge needle will get you up to about the peak compression in that cylinder. Once you've got that number, then what you can do is write that down. So number one, then go to number two, number three, number four, write them all down. If one of them shows very low compression, test it again. If it shows very low compression again, test the cylinder next to it. If that cylinder goes up to normal, then you know the cylinder that you have trouble with is that cylinder. Now, if all of the cylinders read pretty close, that's good, that's what you want. The compression should be over 100 PSI. Books will also tell you 80 PSI. Today's gasoline, low octane, I'd like to see over 100 PSI in four-stroke engines. Somewhere between 125 and 150, ideal. That's good. 150, really good. 160, even better. Newer engines, even 175. The whole secret here is when you're doing a compression test, you're looking for consistency. So I want to see 
almost the same value in each cylinder. So if I have 150 in this cylinder, and I have 148 in this cylinder, and I have 150 in this cylinder, and 145 in this cylinder, they're very close. 20% is the rule. If you're over 20% drop, figure 100 PSI, and the other one's 80, and 100 and 100, that cylinder has issues. It doesn't mean it's not firing, but it has issues. So you're looking for consistency. That's the biggest thing I can tell you out of here. If you're doing a compression test because you're trying to diagnose a problem, a vacuum test would be a good place to start before you even do a compression test. We'll get to that later. All right, so I hope this helps you understand how to hook up a starter button, how to do your compression test. Don't forget to label your spark plug number one. The reason for that is so you can put it back to number one and then you can say, oh, the next cylinder is number three. The next cylinder is number four. Sometimes the wires on V8s are the same length. And it's easy to make a mistake because they're underneath the exhaust manifold to hook them up in correctly. I have done that. So I hope that helps you understand how to do a compression test. It's a very important test to do. A lot of technicians, they do it their way. I like to show all my students how to do it in a proper format, especially not making an early mistake of putting the spark plug wires on backwards. Hopefully you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up and I'll talk to you soon.